What up? Ash Head Cigar Junkie here, and we are here for episode number two of Ash Head Cigar Junkie. Hey, we got a whole lot we're going to talk about today, a whole lot of story. We're going to share our passion for cigars, our passion for the cigar community, and hey, just talk about the things that make us cigar aficionados. That's what we're going to talk about today, so stay tuned. I will be right back with all of of the Ash Head Cigar Junkie goodness. Right back at you. First of all, getting started, I just want to give a few shout outs. I want to shout out everybody who will be listening to episode one of the Ash Head Cigar Junkie podcast. I will have links below in the description in the description um, how you can get to the podcast and listen to the podcast. Um, I want to shout out the viewership right here on YouTube. Boom, y'all get to see my face, my beautiful face. And for those who don't, they just it's just unfortunate that they don't get to see this handsome face. But um, thanks for everybody who does tune in. Shout out to all the subscribers, all 12, 13 subscribers currently, 12 or 13, 13 subscribers currently. So shout out to them. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart because I know there's some other stuff that you can be looking at on YouTube, um, some more, something more, or something more productive, but hey, you choose to listen to this guy talk about cigars. Hey, first I want to start out with an apology. If you hear me sneeze or cough or wipe my eyes, it's because I just got seasonal allergies and they have been cutting up. I delayed recording for two days this episode because my allergies were so bad. But hey, here we are. We doing this thing anyway. We on the back porch, baby. We on the back porch, baby, in Ash Head Cigar Junkie Studio Holes. We on the back porch. Hey, before we get too deep into it, I just want to ask everybody to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the little bell icon so you'll know every single time I post a video. And guess what? There is more content on the way. But getting into it, man, let's give some shout outs right quick. First of all, I want to shout out Run Real TV. I put a link in the description so you guys can go check his channel out. Um, I had a few questions, and I hope you don't mind me mentioning, but I'm going to mention it anyway. Um, sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. <laughs> so forgive me if um, you didn't want me. But I have some questions about Cuban cigars. So he gave me, um, you know, like a little brief education on them and some need to know stuff and he helped me out a lot. I just want to say to Ron, thank you. And I did smoke my first real Cuban, I put emphasis on real, that's based upon our conversation, real Cuban, which was the Monte Cristo number four. Um, it was a, a lot milder than what I expected because it was this was the smaller um, smaller cigar so I, I assumed because it was smaller that meant it was strong so they didn't give you as much tobacco but it was very very mild I would say but overall I enjoyed it overall I enjoyed it so that was my first um, Cuban cigar experience thank you to run also I would like to shout out that brother Lee Mac um, Lee Mack was doing a, a live um, a few days ago and he mentioned Ash Head Cigar Junkies and he didn't have to do that and I appreciate you a whole lot man I appreciate his energy every morning when I get on IG I scroll until I find his little morning greeting that he always put on IG it starts the day with the big good morning that he gives, a lot of energy, a lot of positive energy, and it transfers through um, the phone screen to our hearts. Also, want to give a shout out to Cigar Prop. 
Cigar Prop was the number 10 subscriber on YouTube. Hey, I want to thank you guys. Hey, that's one of my favorite cigar couples, man. I like when, when, um, when the both of them are on the screen and doing their thing. You get a lot of laughs and get a lot of good information, man. All these cigar reviewers, man, y'all help me so much. It's like educational, you know, when I'm listening to y'all. Learn a whole lot, pick up a whole lot. So I appreciate you guys. And I also want to give a shout out to um, Martin Amaya. Um, he has been very, very helpful to watch him. Now, I'm going to confess something. Um, Martin, when I first started watching your channel, I was always showing back up to your channel just to hear you say one thing that made me laugh every single time you did it. Made me laugh every single time. And that one thing was... Kind of boring, you already. <laughs> That's funny. Every time. Every time to me. That is funny, man. So, um, again... Big shout outs to you guys. Hey, support these guys and these channels I mentioned. Also, um, listen to Cigar Pulpit Podcast. It's on Spotify. Cigar Pulpit Podcast on Spotify. Good. I like it. I enjoy those guys a lot. What I mostly enjoy about those guys, I feel like that I'm funny. That I, 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 I got good jokes sometimes and I tell good jokes and I'm a funny guy and a lot of my jokes be very very corny very corny but that's what make them so funny to me so that's why I like those guys because they say some corny jokes but that's what makes those jokes funny to me so that's not an insult that's a compliment so go check out the guys at Cigar Pool Pit on Spotify um man I think that's all for my shout outs I keep looking over to my left because I'm looking at my notes um, to make sure that I'm not missing anybody on the shout outs. So that's it for the shout outs, man. We're going to move on and I'm going to take a brief break and after these messages, we'll be right back. We are back, back in the place to be, baby. And it's right here with Ash Head, Cigar Junkie. Hey, just talking about our passion for the cigars. Hey, first things first, I want to also mention and encourage everybody to support your local cigar shops. I am an advocate of supporting my local cigar shops, c cigar shop. Um, I know it's kind of tough during you know, the time of everything that's going on right now, but I have learned and seen where a lot of them do curbside um, pickups, a lot of them do um, delivery, and a lot of them you can just order and get your cigars that you love shipped to you. So take advantage of all those things and support those guys, your local cigar shops a lot. Um, I wanted to show this awesome lighter that I got. Also, this lighter I got from my local cigar shop. This was in a drawing that I got at the local cigar shop. I wanted to talk about this lighter that I got in the drawing. It was their um, Cigars and Moors. That's the local cigar shop. Uh, they got multiple locations here in the Birmingham, Alabama area. And they had their 14th anniversary. Um, they had a drawing. And I got this My Father Cigar Torch. It's pretty cool. I like it a lot. And this is the torch that I'm going to be using today to smoke the cigar that we're gonna highlight in this episode. Um, but I had a lot of fun. Man, it was a whole lot of fun. Um, met a whole lot of new people. I got to meet the Pedermos, or I hope I'm saying that correctly. If I'm, I heard people say it one or two different ways, but um, Pedermo, I got to meet them, and 
they were great people enjoyed them got to talk to um their rep and he shared some great things with us so check this out what do you want to know? Hey, tell me what you tell me what you want to know about Perdomo, man. Tell me everything I need to know. Vertically, it's like vertically, vertically integrated company. Grow ninety five percent of our own tobacco, all Nicaraguan. Uh, our our wrappers are Cuban seed. Um, great company, man. Great company. The owners here. The owner's wife is here. I mean, the family, family business. It's great my business. top five favorite cigars. Yeah, I mean, so many people have told me one of the first cigars they ever smoked was Perdomo Champagne. Great brand, great brand. Yeah, excellent. Appreciate. And that was just a brief clip from the 14th anniversary of cigars and more that took place this year. About um, it's probably been about a good month ago now or a little over a month but I had a lot of fun enjoyed a heck of a lot so support your local cigar shops support your local cigar shop I mean when I first um, really seriously smoking cigars um, years ago there was a local package store called these these ABC um, these it may be bees how to ride by there and see because I know they're still open but they had a large human door inside. That's why I used to get my first cigars from. I used to go there all the time. I used to smoke a lot of Macanudo cigars. I used to smoke the Macanudo Lancero cigars. They had two um, that I smoked a lot. Um, one of they came in these in this like this little aluminum cylinder that screwed on the end. Had like a little cedar sleeve down on the middle of it. I used to go get those a whole lot. Smoked a lot of those and used to go get them from D's. They used to be located here in Birmingham. So I need to go back and visit the place where I first started buying cigars from. Because I haven't been there in a while. I haven't. So I'm going to go by and visit. And I'm going to buy some Maca Noodles when I get an opportunity to go by and visit that place again. So, hey, support your locals because your locals have a whole lot of good cigars. Now, normally, or my plan was to plan my episodes around getting a box from my monthly cigars, getting a box from them, but due to my own fault, I missed out on my March box. Um, so it's my fault, I missed out on my March box, but I do want to shout them out. And the reason why I'm mentioning them, even though I don't have a box to do the unboxing like I planned on doing for the episode, because I plan on doing an episode each month. And each month, the episode will be kind of geared around doing that unboxing. But I'm mentioning them because it's just a great customer service. Great customer service. Anytime I've emailed with a question, boom, rapid respond. It's like, um, and question get answered. Um, Full of information in the response so I want to shout out them for their great customer service since I don't have any smokes to talk about from them for this month and that was my fault because I missed out on getting my box order but we won't miss out on May we will have some great sticks I'm positive from them in May because um, it's, uh, anytime I get sampler packs, whether it be from local or whether it be from something I order, um, I always just dis just run across just this one smoke that's just off the chain. And the one in February's box was the Southern Draw Jacob's Ladder that was fire. Boy, I like that cigar. That was a good cigar right there to me. That was a good one. That was a good one. I liked that cigar a whole lot. But, you know, some of the other um, YouTube reviewers and podcast reviewers talk about their box. And the guys that I mentioned in the shout outs, those are some of the guys. So you can find out what was in those boxes from those guys 
and I'm sure you won't be disappointed. It'll be some sticks that you want to get um, and you want to take advantage of. Hey, but I got a question for the cigar reviewers. My question for the cigar reviewers is, do you enjoy a cigar better when you're not having to review the cigar? When you, um, I guess the question that I'm asking is, do you enjoy the stick? Do you enjoy a stick better if you're just at home relaxing, smoking, without feeling the obligation to review the cigar, or do you enjoy them just the same whether you're reviewing them or if you're just at home or at your cigar lounge smoking a cigar? I find myself, I find out that I smoke cigars faster when I am reviewing them, so. I don't get a chance to enjoy it the way I would like to enjoy or as much as I can enjoy if I'm just randomly smoking at my cigar lounge or here on the back porch by myself or with friends or something like that. So that's my answer to the question. Want to hear from the other cigar reviewers your answer to the question and what, how do you enjoy or where and when do you enjoy your cigar best? Hey. But moving on, moving on, the cigar that we're going to be smoking today is the Alec Bradley Tempest. Alec Bradley Tempest. Like Alec Bradley cigars, every one that I have ever smoked, I have enjoyed. I'm going to remove this foot band and I'm going to whip out my V cup and we're going to get this baby started up. We gonna get this baby started up. This is not a community V cutter, so I can lick my cigar before I cut. And on these, um, like I think this is like a six by fifty-six. I think this is. I like to do it like this. I like to put that little star cut on that guy. Make sure I get a good draw, good burn. Um, I have the tendency to go for the darker hued cigars. And this is a beautiful color on this cigar. And that's what drew me to it. That's exactly what drew me to the cigar. That darker hue. And I had got also to where I was only smoking one particular Alec Bradley cigar and that was the Magic Toast and that was the only one I was smoking back to back, back to back, just going to get that one only. So I said I'm going to try some uh, other things by them and this is one of the others that I wanted to try and this, this particular cigar right here is also Ash Head Cigar Junkies Pick 4 Quarantine and Chill. I started a series called Quarantine and Chill where I pick um, cigars that I think are the best cigars for when you're quarantined and chilling. What that is, that's when you at home quarantining, can't get out and you need a smoke to and you need a cigar to smoke. Well, this is one of my picks for quarantine and chill. And that series will get started back up. Um I was gonna not do any more, but I am gonna start back doing that series. I'm gonna do them um really until I feel like not doing them anymore. Cause we're still in quarantine. Hey, so we're quarantined and chilling. So let's have a great cigar for our quarantine and chill. So this is my pick for quarantine and chill and that's the Alec Bradley Tempest. Tempest. This is a um, Honduran cigar. It has a Honduras wrapper, a Honduras filler, and it has a Honduras, not Honduras, Honduras and Nicaragua filler, Honduras binder, Honduras wrapper on this particular cigar. But let's get it lit up. Let's get it lit up with our My Father torch. Let's toast the foot just a little bit. This torch get hotter than my other torch. And this torch is even turned down so. Hey, it's got a, it's got a mirror on it though. So you can look and see if if 
get sick of our lid eating. You don't even have to turn it around and blow it. But initially it starts out great. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about any flavor notes until I get about a half an inch in. Give everything time to heat up so that I can talk about the good flavor notes of this particular cigar. Oh, um, guess what time it is? Guess what time it is? It is journal time. And what we're going to do, this portion, this segment, this cigar will also go into the journal. We're going to talk about what's been added to the journal. I do keep a cigar journal, keep a cigar journal, um, and I try to keep up with every cigar that I smoke. Now, I smoke a cigar just about every day. So, there, there is, that is a little bit difficult to keep up with each and every individual cigar that I smoke. It is a challenge. And there are some cigars that do not, not make the journal but you know what that don't mean that there are bad cigars that don't mean that they wasn't worthy they just didn't happen to make the journal but i like them a lot i like keeping up with my cigar journal my cigar journal what has made the cigar journal so far the first page that has made the cigar journal so far is the lfd and delusion bull um, my cigar journal, it basically um, has a section for the brand name, the size of the cigar, the date, the price I purchased the cigar, the date I purchased the cigar, the price I purchased the cigar for, I mean, the date I purchased, where did I get the cigar from. It also has a section for the wrapper, the binder, the filler, and whether or not I didn't enjoy, whether it was just average, or if I did enjoy the cigar, and it has a rating system from a scale to one to 10. I also have a cigar journal um, app in my phone. So I kind of combine the two when it comes to the notes section, because on my phone, I can do like five stars for whether it be the aroma, the burn, um, the appearance, and the taste I, I could do five stars on that so uh, so like for example the LFD Andalusian Bull was the first cigar in my cigar journal and I enjoyed that cigar on a scale of 1 to 10 I gave it a 10 um, and in the journal on my phone I just brought the notes over over to my cigar journal because I do the the five star thing on there as far as aroma I gave it a five as far as taste I gave it a five as far as appearance I gave it a five as far as burn I gave it a three and a half because anybody who had experience smoking an Andalusian bull know they burn a little bit funny they burn a little bit but it's like the tobacco as it heats up the burn it starts kind of like just blooming almost like a flower you know how a flower you type and then it just kind of blooms. That's how the burn does every time I smoke an Andalusian Bull. But it is still my favorite cigar. It is still my favorite cigar. What else has made the, the cigar joint? Hey, the Alec Bradley Black Market is made. It's made the um, cigar journal. The Magic Toast. It's made the cigar journal. What else is the Pradermo um, 10th anniversary has made it. Um, this My Father cigar that I never can remember how to pronounce the name of it. But I like it a lot because I got um, second favorite cigar right by the, by the label of it. Um, I like that guy a lot. And I didn't write a whole lot of notes on that one though, as you probably see. As you probably can see, what else has made it? The uh, Monte Cristo 50th anniversary that also has made the cigar journal. That was a good cigar. I gave it a 10. I got that cigar in a sampler pack from uh, Cigars and More. Um, what I'm, what one thing that I'm noticing that I noticed, and 
by keeping a cigar journal, what that does, how that helps you, it kind of helps you discover your likes and dislikes. And I find out that my some of my favorite cigars or the ones that I label as top 10 have Ecuadorian tobacco in it. So I like a lot of the cigars with Ecuadorian, to, Ecuadorian tobacco in it. Um, for example, the LFD has Ecuadorian tobacco, and I like that cigar a heck of a lot. And the Money Cristo 50th Anniversary 2018 TAA Exclusive, it has Ecuadorian tobacco in it, and I like that cigar a whole lot as well. Let's see what else has made the Cigar Journal. We're just gonna highlight everything in the Cigar Journal right now. Um, the Diesel, the Rabbit Hole, um, was done by AJ Fernandez. It's the um, Barrel Age Diesel. Oh, I'm gonna cover up my review. You know what, I don't like trash stuff. Now, but this was one that has Ecuadorian tobacco that was not a favorite for me. This was one. Um, so we talk about the ones that we give good ratings to all the time, but what about the cigars that we don't give good ratings to? And this particular cigar made the Cigar Journal and it didn't get the best rating. It has an Ecuadorian wrapper. I'm talking about this diesel that's in my Cigar Journal. And the San Andreas binder. Um, it has four different tobaccos in the filler. Um, I didn't enjoy it. I smoked it twice. The first time I smoked it, um, it was just average. I was smoking it with some um, Buffalo Trace at Cigars and More Cigar Lounge 280. Um, I've been plugging a lot of commercials for Cigars and More. I hope you guys are listening to this. Plug a lot of commercials for you guys. But I like them. They got good customer service, so I'm always go check them out. Whether they notice or not, I'm still go. Because I like everybody there who I've ever met. Especially the uh, older gentleman. I don't remember his name. I don't remember his name. But the older gentleman, um, he usually there at the 280. And um, I think he's the one who puts the um, sampler packs together. He mentioned that to me. Man, I like that guy. Man, I like that guy. I just count. I like the elderly. I like older people, man. Older people a lot, man. Get a lot of good wisdom for it. But this Diesel, man, by AJ Fernandez, that rabbit hole. I ain't gonna spend too much time on it because we're not reviewing that particular cigar. We um, we're gonna talk more about the cigar that we're smoking during this um episode. But it just was not enjoyable. It didn't burn well at all, and I think the taste was probably the only thing that really kind of saved it because it didn't taste bad. The taste was just average, but the burn was horrible. Um, the aroma was just average. Um, the appearance was just okay, but I think the burn was so bad till it made the experience of that cigar very, very bad. And it did too make the cigar journal. What else, what else made the cigar journal? <laughs> One of my favorites, the um, Special Reserve Sun Grown Maduro by Rocky Patel. That cigar, I got like a page full of notes here. A page full of notes in blue for that cigar. Page full of notes in blue. That was a good cigar. Um, it was like a dark chocolate tasting cigar, zesty, um, had a great peppery finish. I wrote a lot, I ain't gonna review that one, but the Sun Grown, the Rock Patel Sun Grown, that's another one. Um, uh, another, the LFD, um, the LFD, this was the, um, the double, the double Lagoro, how I say that, this one. That made the journal. I got that two different sizes also. Um, the um, Pradermo Connecticut, I'm gonna talk about that cigar a little bit later. It made the journal. Um, the CAO, this is just a CAO. 
Slew Short Cigar. Here's the band. That made the journal. I smoke a lot of those. That's all um, good everyday smoke for me. The JFR by Agonosa. Um, I like that cigar. That was a good spice cream cigar. Yeah, I like that cigar. I put spice cream. That was a word that on 223 2020 I invented the word spice cream for that particular cigar. Um also the um the syndicata that was a good cigar it made it um the diesel 10th anniversary that was in a my monthly cigars box uh, i just talked about the um the um jacob's ladder but that diesel 10th anniversary that was a great cigar guess what kind of tobacco in it ecuadorian on the wrap I like Ecuadorian tobacco. I like it. But that Diesel 10th Anniversary was a good cigar. That was one that was in the box for my monthly cigars, too. Um, of course, the um, the Southern Draw Jacob's Ladder, it made the the Cigar Journal. The My Carita Tiki Chaka, I think I said that correctly. It made the Cigar Journal. It was just average for me, also. Um, what else made the Cigar Journal? Oh, the La Gloria Box Press and the La Gloria Moderno. I like those a lot also. That made the Cigar Journal. Next, LFD Maduro number five, LFD Maduro number six. If y'all don't know about know by now, I talk about LFD cigars a lot. Those are my favorite cigars. Those are my favorites. I like them a lot. <clears throat> so it's gonna be a lot of those in my Cigar Journal. Um, the Aging Room Quattro, number one. It made the Cigar Journal. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Being that it was number one cigar, I enjoyed it. Um, got two number ones. I got um, may have a few more number ones also in my Cigar Journal. But I know the LFD was a number one in 2016, um, and the Aging Room was a number one 2019. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, It didn't make my top 10 favorite list, um, but I enjoyed the cigar a lot. I gave it on a scale of 1 to 10, I gave it an 8. So that was pretty good. Um, the Knob Habano, that's a little um, Robusto, a little 4 inch Robusto. Um, I enjoyed that cigar a lot too. It was like a little flavor bomb. That was that also made the Cigar Journal. Um, the Dun Pippin Garcia Original, um, the My Father Connecticut edition um just gonna run through them real quick not to get too long in it the rocky patel 50th the la gloria connecticut um the crowned head um this was the crowned head i'm afraid the label because it's a roman normal that made the cigar down and that was a, another cigar that made the cigar journal that i did not enjoy it at all i did not enjoy the taste i did not enjoy the burn the parents was great the draw was great the aroma was good but i did not enjoy the taste or the burn on that particular cigar um the agonosa Quesa fernandez it made the cigar journal the another Don Pippin Garcia. This was the um, this was just a small, a different size of that other one. I like the um, Don Pippins. The reason why I like the Don Pippins because they have a lot of flavor. And I I smoke um, second to LFDs. I probably smoke more my father cigars, and they're my father cigars are very flavorful. So the Don Pippins are very very flavorful. It also made the cigar journal. And that's it. I got some more that I'm going to add to the cigar journal. There's some other labels that I've thrown aside that I'm going to add to. And some that haven't made the journal yet. So that's it for the cigar journal segment. I will be right back. We back. We are back. We are still smoking the Alec Bradley Tempest. And 
what am I enjoying about this cigar? First of all, it's a um, medium cigar. So far, it has been, from the start, it has been more on the mild side to me, but very, very flavorful. Um, I'm drinking coffee, and it tastes <laughs> like the coffee that I'm drinking. It, and I was, I started, I took a sip of the coffee, and my palate got, I say, cleansed enough from talking and swallowing to where when I smoked the cigar, I could taste the flavors without the coffee interruption, but it tastes, and it could be because I'm drinking the coffee, but it tastes just like the coffee I'm drinking. Guess what? I enjoy the coffee that I'm drinking, and I'm enjoying this cigar. I like the aroma of this cigar a lot, too. Um, I like how this cigar smells. Kind of, it's got a really, really sweet aroma. I like that a lot of it. Got a good flavors. It is a creamy cigar. Good flavors. Um, I do taste dark coffee. Not quite espresso, but like a dark roast. It tastes more like a rich roast of coffee. Like that about it. Um, overall, man, I'll give this cigar, uh, I'll give it a nine. I'll give it a nine. It's not really blowing me away like the Magic Toast, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a whole lot. I'm enjoying it a whole lot. We're going to continue to smoke that, baby, as we continue to run our mouths and talk. Hey, one of the things that I like about cigars, first of all, let's talk about the cigar community now. Um, talked about this in the last episode, talked about it a little bit in this episode. Um, really enjoy the cigar community, man. Really enjoy the brotherhood as well as the sisterhood um, of the cigar community and how everybody just come together for one come and go and that's to enjoy some tobacco man but you know what i like a lot man that i don't think is highlighted enough and maybe it is is the art man the art that is put in it's an art to me i watch the cigar rolling videos and i'm like man this is a art the way they roll the tobacco and how consistent the rolls be and I know these people some of these people have been rolling for years and mom and dad probably rolled and passed down their techniques on to son and daughter but man it is just like art watching it's like it's 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 like watching them paint a um paint a canvas man you got a canvas in this painting and and at the end of it you just see this beautiful painting and that's what the cigar rolling is just art, art form to me and the cigar companies place their art in their bands I always like to admire the bands um and how beautiful and 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 how much thought and art is put into them and the cigar boxes man one of the prettiest boxes that I have seen in a long time is the La Gloria boxes. Now look at that box. That is a pretty well put together box. And then when you open the box, you got that velvet, then you got the wrapper, and then you got the wrapper. Man, that is just gorgeous that is beautiful the finish on these things are so beautiful so i really enjoy the art i do my own little doodling and cigar art i made that picture right there of um the ash head cigar junkie logo i'm gonna do some more cigar art it's got a good smoke output I like cigars with good smoke output. I always associate good smoke output with flavor. So this cigar is very flavorful and it's got a good smoke output. Great draw and I'm tasting everything. One thing so far that I've noticed about this cigar, it has been consistent. It hasn't like hearing this, I guess this, this is 
coming out of the first third into the second third, it's been very, very consistent. Not a whole lot of different changes and transitions. I've just been consistently on the same flavor profile for that whole first third and entering into the second third. So I'm hoping it stays consistent because I like a consistent cigar. I really like a consistent cigar. So that's pretty good. We're going to continue to smoke that and we're going to take a break and we're going to be right back. We are back to talk about first time smokers. First time smokers. We're going to talk about first time smokers. I really, it's, it's two things that I enjoy talking about a lot. And these two things, some people may think they're probably miles apart, but these are two things that I'm very passionate about. One is nutrition and fitness. Talk about nutrition and fitness a lot. Very passionate about it. Um, and another thing that I talk about a lot is cigars. Very passionate about cigars. Um, and I know some people may be like, nutrition and fitness and, and cigars, they really don't go hand in hand. Um, but... I guess that's just a matter of opinion. So, but when I meet someone who wants, who's interested in getting into smoking cigars, or I meet someone who's tried them before and just and probably started out on what I would say would be the wrong cigar. I know that's a matter of opinion. Or if I'm recommending a cigar to somebody who's not an avid cigar smoker, or they're just now starting to smoke cigar. I like to recommend usually a milder cigar, which um, in most cases, most time is a maybe a Connecticut. And I always recommend or I always tell them to try something that I like. And one thing I when I introduce somebody to their first cigar, I want to introduce them to something that's first of all a consistent cigar, something that's very flavorful something that's very mild and something that has um something and a company that has a reputation for providing good cigars so i recommend for first time smokers the Pedermo connecticut that's one that i recommend this is a consistent cigar as far as consistent in flavor consistent in burn um this comes from a very well known Ruptable company you can find them almost anywhere locally and it's just an overall good cigar and i think a person who's smoking for the first time would really enjoy this cigar um because it's going to give them flavor and that's one of the things that when we i noticed that when we're talking to people about cigars for the first time one thing we mention a lot is flavor we tell them flavor 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 um find some with flavor because we don't want to turn them off with baby with maybe like something like a strong cigar that may have some bitterness to it which i may like but for a first time cigar smoker that may turn them off because uh, they like oh that's kind of bitter that don't really taste very well so i'm going to give you i'm going to recommend something that's a little bit on the milder side that doesn't have a whole lot of punch that's not as pungent um that's just going to be mellow that's going to be mild, that's going to be packed with flavor, that's going to have a great burn to it, something that I think they will enjoy for the first time and that will keep them coming back and that will make them curious. And also, the company matters to me too, what company I recommend to you as well. And all, of, all throughout this whole episode, I've mentioned different cigars from different companies and all of them are great. Um, one thing I like about the Pedermo company is the, I met, met the family or the husband and wife. I met them. So therefore, I know that they are nice people, great people. The wife, she loves coming to Alabama to get the connected sausage that's made here in Alabama, the great state of Alabama. If you ever had connected sausage. And, and in addition to that, they just, um, they got a good history for just making great cigars. They're known for just making the great cigars. So, if you're a first-time smoker, I recommend 
this cigar, the Padermo Connecticut, should be the first cigar that you try. And I'm sure this will make you a, I hope this will make you a cigar lover. I hope it will make you a cigar lover. So, still smoking the Alec Bradley Tempest, which is our pick of the day, which is our pick for quarantine and chill, our top cigar for quarantine and chill. And we have been enjoying this cigar to the fullest. I'm in the second third of this cigar and it still has been consistent. Um, my burn got off just a little bit, but I don't think it's the cigar's fault that my burn got off a little bit. I think that was more on me because I'm smoking outside and it's a little breezy. So, one, so when you're smoking outside and it's breezy, when you're smoking, rotate your cigar either in your mouth or just try to make sure you rotate it because what happens is one side of the cigar cools and it causes that side to burn slower than the remainder of the cigar so try that rotate your cigar well we have come to the close of another episode i want to thank everybody who has listened and who have tuned in and there will be more content to come remember me support the channel i'll have the details in the description on how you can support the channel most importantly man just watch just, just watch it let me know you watched it by hitting the like button watch um share also comment man i like um to see comments in the description of people you know may may have something um something they want to suggest something you might want to see me review um in the quarantine and chill series something um that i may have said that stood out to you that you may want to come and come in on hey man talk to me talk to me I like me new people I like talking to new people i like talking about cigars so talk to me let me know you heard it let me know you saw it hey and i ain't going nowhere I'm going to be back day after day, month after month, giving you content, talking about these cigars, talking about my passion and my love for these cigars. So again, thank you to everyone that watched this episode. Thank you to everyone that listened to this episode on the podcast. And I want to say Ash Head Cigar Junkie, out.